Hey, this is Riker, and today let's go ahead and throw together a design for a Wollaston landscape lens. We're going to be designing this lens right here in about 10 minutes or less. Let's see how long it takes. So let's start with a brand new open instance of ZMAX Optic, ZMAX Optic Studio. Let's go ahead and start with System Explorer. If it's not open, again, go to Setup, System Explorer, Aperture. Let's do a 25 millimeter entrance aperture. Let's do fields of view. Let's go ahead and open up our field data editor this time. Let's go down here. Let's go to fields wizard. It's a wizard. It's going to make stuff magical for us. We're going to go ahead and do four Y field types and 22.5 degrees as our max half angle. And so this will be a 45 degree uh, field of view lens. Okay, let's close that and go to Wavelengths. Let's go to Settings and select a preset of the FDC Visible Wavelengths, and then we'll close this out right now. Okay, we'll close the Field Data Editor, and now let's start inserting some surfaces. Let's go to the Image Surface and hit the Insert key on your keyboard, or right-click and hit Insert. Up to you. And uh, on this first thickness, we're going to do a thickness offset of, let's start with 40 millimeters. And then we're going to go ahead and stick our lens there. It's going to have a material of MBK7. And we're going to give our lens a thickness of 10 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and start with a nice sur solve type here. Uh, chief ray normal. Now, the thing that makes a Wollaston landscape lens work so well is it's using this principle of chief ray normality, more or less. Um, if the chief ray is normal to a surface, then that surface will not be contributing coma. And um, technically, it shouldn't be contributing astigmatism either. So there's our lens. I went to set up and just hit cross-section view. Let's pick this up and drag it over here and stick it on the right and on this last surface let's go ahead and do a marginal ray height solve and let that come to focus okay so right now this is a pretty fast focal length lens uh, much faster than a true Wallston landscape lens but uh, that is okay for now we are going to use the optimizer to convert this into the kind of lens that we really want. So go ahead and highlight these surfaces and hit Control Z. Okay, those are now variables. And let's go to the optimization tab. Go to the merit function editor. If you see the shortcut key, it's also F6. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll have it auto populate a bunch of rays that it's tracing through the system. And then we'll close that. And we're going to go ahead and put in an additional constraint. So go ahead and insert, hit the insert key twice. And we're going to type in working F number, WFNO. You'll notice that it also shows up here at the bottom of my screen. It probably will show up on the bottom of yours if you haven't changed your settings too much. I Honestly, I don't know if I've changed my settings, but there it is. So um, the working F number that we want is going to be F16. We're going to be a slow focusing lens, and we'll give that a weight of one. And we're not really that close to a solution right now, but the optimizer is pretty robust. Let's go ahead and just hit the optimize button and see what happens. OK. And uh, check it out, it found a solution. Okay. So um, we're bringing out the light here out to a nice focus. And you can see that we are not, uh, the, we're not, we've got some spherical aberration here at F16. That's pretty small, but it's still there. Um, let's go ahead and vary the distance from the stop surface to our lens by hitting Control Z, and then we'll also vary the distance from our lens to our image by hit, hitting Control Z on this cell right here. Okay, let's do Control Shift O, hit Enter, and then it optimizes the exit. 
Okay, and it didn't change those distances or parameters very much, just a little bit. And there we go. There's our Wallston landscape lens. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of analysis to give you an idea of how good this is. This was a historical lens. Um, let's go to, what do I actually want? Let's do geometric enclosed energy. Okay, so this is telling me that for on axis, 80% of the energy is contained within about 130 micron radius. Our focal length is 408 millimeters. So let's see what sort of resolution that means. So we've got um, 0.13 millimeters is our resolution divided by our 408.2 millimeter focal length. So our resolution on axis is about 0.3 milliradians. If we're looking at an object that's maybe, I don't know, 100 meters away, then we are resolving every 0 0.03 meters in our image. So this is pretty nice for landscape imaging, especially large format landscape imaging. imaging. You'll notice that... Uh, my image here, the semi-diameter is 162.9 millimeters. So the image that we're forming here is over one foot in diameter. It is a big image. Um, let's go ahead and look at off-axis, how we're doing. And 80% encircled energy happens at about, if you look up here, it'll show you. If, uh, if you don't have that, you can just click on uh, active cursor. Um, 80% is happening at 337, okay? So 0.337, again, divided by 408.2, gives me the angular resolution. Multiply that by 100 meters, and we're resolving um, about every 0 0.08 meters. I'm going to go ahead and convert that, multiply it by 1,000, because I like to work in millimeters, and divide by 25.4, because I also like to work in inches. And we are resolving every 3.25 inches for objects that are a little over a football field away at the edge of your field of view. So overall, this is actually um, a pretty good landscape lens. And again, it creates huge images. Now it's running at f16, so you, the exposure time, um, you need to be in a dark room. And that's what this, uh, I believe, was originally used for, was in... Uh, as a camera obscura. So that's all we got for today. Looks like I finished in under eight minutes. Thank you for watching.